Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, long as we use logic and common sense. This season, we're returning to the topic of the Psalms and their meaning. Now, a brief disclaimer before getting into this psalm. The Psalms will be numbered differently in different translations of the Bible. This is a very, very old discrepancy, and to help clear things up, I'll be explaining what number the psalm has in the Dewey Rheims Bible and in the Revised Standard Version. However, the episodes themselves will list psalm numbers as they're given in the Douay Rheims Bible. Sorry if this is confusing. Anyway, this is Psalm 48 in the Douay Rheims Bible, but Psalm 49 in the RSV. Unto the end, a psalm for the sons of Kor. Again, we see the sons of Kor, Korah, mentioned here, as in the last several psalms. Hear these things, all ye nations. Give ear, all ye inhabitants of the world, all you that are earthborn and you sons of men, both rich and poor together. Everyone pay attention. My mouth shall speak wisdom, and the meditation of my heart understanding. I'll both say and think wise things. I will incline my ear to a parable. I will open my proposition on a psaltery. I'll pay attention to holy stories and songs. Why shall I fear in the evil day? The iniquity of my heel shall encompass me. Iniquity of my heel means something like evil in the path I've walked, which means that this verse says that even when great evil is close and all around him, the only evils he should really fear are the ones he's committed. They that trust in their own strength and glory in the multitude of their riches, no brother can redeem, nor shall man redeem. He shall not give to God his ransom, nor the price of the redemption of his soul, and shall labor forever, and shall still live unto the end. All the strength in the world can't compare to the strength of God, and all the money in the world can't bribe God. Those who focus on gaining riches, far from being able to save themselves through corruption and bribery, are making it all the more impossible for anyone to save them. Salvation is so valuable that no human money could possibly pay for it. If we tried, we'd be working forever and ever, and still never accomplish it. He shall not see destruction, when he shall see the wise dying. Here, the phrase, see destruction, means something like anticipate destruction. It refers to a person who, even though he sees other, smarter, cleverer people being destroyed, never thinks about his own death. The senseless and the fool shall perish together, and they shall leave their riches to strangers. As in the parable of the rich fool, a person who only thinks about personal gain ends up suddenly dying and someone else gets all their goods. And their sepulchres shall be their houses forever their dwelling places, to all generations. They have called their lands by their names. Foolish people will be laid into tombs with their names carved onto them in stone and not brought back out again until the end of time. And man, when he was in honor, did not understand. He is compared to senseless beasts and has become like to them. Men are honored more than animals, but they die all the same. This verse may also be implying that the more a person is honored, the less likely they are to recognize the implications of their own mortality. This way of theirs is a stumbling block to them, and afterwards they shall delight in their mouth. All of these bad things happen to foolish people precisely because they've chosen the wrong path. They even brag about it, and about how much they enjoy the foolish things they've done. They are laid in hell like sheep. Death shall feed upon them and the just shall have dominion over them in the morning, and their help shall decay in hell from their glory. Laid in hell like sheep refers to the inevitability of their deaths. The morning refers to the final resurrection at the end of the current world, and the phrase from their glory means away from the times and places when they experience personal glory. So this verse means that they'll face inevitable death, and that after the final resurrection, just people will have authority over them, and the glory they previously enjoyed won't help them one bit. But God will redeem my soul from the hand of hell, when he shall receive me. God won't allow me to face the death beyond death that the unfaithful suffer. He'll protect me. Be not thou afraid, when a man shall be made rich, and when the glory of his house shall be increased. For when he shall die, he shall take nothing away, nor shall his glory descend with him. One of the deepest truths of the world that God has created. We come into this life with nothing, and we take nothing with us except our choices and the state of our souls, good and bad. Whatever we receive after death is given to us by God, but we don't carry possessions from one life into the next. For in his lifetime his soul will be blessed, and he will praise thee when thou shalt do well to him. 
He shall go in to the generations of his fathers, and he shall never see light. Not that this happens to every rich person. Saints Thomas More, John Fisher, and Louis the Ninth of France were rich, as were Nicodemus, Zacchaeus, Lazarus, and Joseph of Arimathea, all of whom were followers of Jesus. What these verses are saying is that riches themselves don't increase our chances of being rescued from death by God, and may, in fact, decrease them. Man, when he was in honor, did not understand. He hath been compared to senseless beasts, and made like to them. A repeat of a line from earlier in the psalm, and again it carries the same meaning. Men are honored more than beasts, but they die just like them, and often the ones who are honored more understand that less. This is a psalm of warning, drawing attention to the mortality of human beings and the serious implications of that mortality. It also encourages people to serve God in order to escape to a better faith in evildoers. However, it offers comfort, too, especially to those oppressed by the rich and wondering if they'll ever see justice. That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.